Like you see where the red, where it's like the little white pieces, it looks like it's coming off the shirt. And the areas of the print that have less contrast kind of... Look where I'm at, guys. We are at Aplique's headquarters and we're here for a good reason, all right? We are here because look, guys, I'm a graphic designer, you know that. I teach graphic design, but sometimes my graphics don't always translate well to printing, such as DTG printing, direct-to-garment printing. So I have a special guest, are you guys ready? What's up, Let's guys? Do. So this is Ian, you guys already know him from Aplique, and he's going to talk about what we're doing today. We're gonna figure out how to make awesome direct-to-garment prints for graphic designers. There's really a, just a handful of things where I feel like graphic designers put in all the hard work, you guys create amazing designs, and when you go to print stuff, you don't always get exactly what you're expecting. Nope. We're gonna try to close that gap today. We're gonna give you guys some quick tips that you can use to get awesome results that you expect with your direct-to-garment prints. He is the glue that's holding us all together. Ready? Let's go. Let's do it. Yeah, I gotta keep it trendy on my soul. I'm the most selfish person that I know. Here we go, down the rabbit hole. Got a couple carrots from my neck. Self-respect when you out of line. I thought I was a lot skinnier until I was with you. Until I was on film. <laughs> we gotta fix my art, guys. You guys saw the Dr. Disrespect design on my Instagram. It's cool. We all know it's cool. I got the separations in Photoshop. Great for screen printing, but, but not so much for DTG printing. And that's why I'm here to let him kind of help us. Ian's the pro here. I am not. I'm just a designer. So he's going to like unblur that line that separates us designers from actual printers, okay? So. I have right here the dock design. By the way, quick disclaimer, I do not own rights to this design, all right? I'm not making profit off of it. This is for educational purposes only, all right? Uh, when we get into it, there's really like three kind of main things that go into just really, really simple rules okay. uh, that we can follow when we're doing graphic design for direct to printing. I'd say the first kind of trap that graphic designers can fall into is you see like a beautiful, vi uh, vibrant, bright print on your screen. And that is in RGB, like uh, the color mode is RGB. Even if you switch it to CMYK, this image, the way our eye sees it is because there's a million little light bulbs in the screen and that's not the real number, but there's millions of light bulbs that are shining light into our eyeball for us to be able to see this. Right. And so it gives us a perception of when we're viewing artwork on our computer screens, right? Because we're always viewing the, the artwork on our, on our computer screen. Right, on our monitors, exactly. Right? And so it's gonna to appear to be more vibrant and brighter to us. Then when we go and print it in the real world, there's no light bulbs behind my shirt shining light through your artwork anymore, right? right? Okay. All, the only way that our eye can see and perceive that light is ambient light hits the print and then reflects back into our eyeball, right? Gotcha. So in general, I kind of, we see a lot of partners who are like, oh, I was expecting it to be a little brighter. And the, real, uh, the reality is like, if you increase the saturation in your file, and make the pixels a little bit more brighter than they need to be on your computer screen, when you go to print them, it might be out of saturation and a brightness and a vibrancy of the print that you're actually expecting. Gotcha. So your computer screen is gonna show you colors a little bit more bright than the printer will print. Gotcha, okay. In general, across the board. So that's kind of the first trap. The second trap, and you are king of this, Charlie, is just transparency in your file, right? And we've yeah. talked about this a lot before. You started it in me, though, because <laughs> I'm on this like mission now trying to figure out the right transparency. But you were saying um, before, we had a, a lot of talks about this because we're trying to, I'm trying to become a pro at this. Uh, you can't really work with anything less than 100% uh, opacity, right? That's it's right. Not, it's not a good idea to, at least. You can do it in your graphic design, and this computer screen can render that beautifully. Beautifully, But yeah. when you go to print something, we don't like print with transparent ink, right? It doesn't exist. And, and you get some kind of intricacies that may not come out well. Like most director garment printing, when you're printing on a dark colored garment, like the most popular t-shirt is black, right? Yeah. So most of your prints are black, or yeah. not most of them, but a lot of them. Yeah. Anytime you're printing colors, you're always gonna print that white artwork layer underneath it. Right. And then when you add transparent ink to white, it just it just looks white. Right? It doesn't turn out the way you think it's so, going to. Yeah, so in general, you should always be doing your designs with 100% opacity. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be leaving things at 80% opacity because it's it's just going to look less vibrant than you'd expect it to. And you, yeah. you'll see like a white undercoat and then 80% of And I've seen that, that too where I have like, uh, let's say like a black color, like a lot of shadows in my art, and then I have, I, it, I fade it out into the fabric of the shirt. In my brain, it's going to look great, right? So what we're saying is like when you go to print that, you're going to see these weird color banding going on 
into that gradient. It, it's going to even have like a white tint to it sometimes, or maybe the darks aren't as dark as you thought it was going to turn out. And there's actually a good example in here. Maybe we can show you later, but uh, that's what we're saying. So I spit a little bit right there. You guys see that? Um, but I guess, I guess like, how would we fix that though? Let's say pretend for a second I have a circle and I'm, and I'm fading it out, right? And on the screen here, I'll demonstrate what the circle is going to look like. How would we fade it into the fabric without ruining the intricacy of that gradient? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it, a lot of it's exactly how you would create gradients for like doing things like screen printing, right? Right. Where you're doing like the, the fade through, but each one of those pixels that you create, you can't use like an opacity filter to, to make that happen. Right, right. right you need to literally have individual pixels. It needs that to be the real deal, 100% out. sharp pixels yep. that make that gradient. So exactly. Yeah. So we talk about this all the time on this channel, but things like bitmapping is like a great example. But the thing is too, like not all bitmaps are created equal. The dot pattern does matter. The size of it does matter. And that's what I've started noticing. So when you do your dot patterns, you want them to be a little larger too, so that a print head can actually pick up that dot. If it's a tiny little dot, you can't expect that detail to show up. Yeah. Same goes with textures, guys. Like when you're applying textures, I know we do some crazy stuff on this channel with textures. The textures can't just be muddy and gross looking and like different opacities here and there. It's got to be uh, consistent across the board for you to get the right print. So anyway, we're going to go in there in a second. But uh, what do you think about this art? Let's go over this art specifically right now. So yeah. what, are, what are things that we should probably look out for before we go print it? Yeah, so in terms of like this artwork file, I mean, I would just say that there's like a lot of kind of like noisiness, like in this kind of range of the file, where you're like doing this rad optical blending to have these like layers of red and white coming through. Definitely. It's just a question of like, is that gonna print ultra, ultra crisp? I actually did two different versions of this artwork and this is the actual uh, photo composition that I made originally. So this is the photo manipulation before all these crazy uh, effects, right? And as, as you guys can see, it's a lot more realistic. And what Ian was just saying is that this would actually probably print better simply because it doesn't have all these crazy dots to blend into each other. It's got smoother gradations. So, um, and again, there it, there's nothing that's uh, bleeding into a, a transparent background either. So this should all print better, right? Like you were saying. Um, in screen printing, you need to have those separations that happen, right? Because it's required by the method of printing. The most beautiful thing about DTG printing is that photorealism tends to print best. So if you get artwork files that are photorealistic, you tend to get really good results with those. So there you go, guys. So, you know, the, the one that I didn't want to print actually might print better. So that's what we're going to try right now. And this is the before. And then when I applied all the effects, which is actually meant for screen printing originally, um, you get something that looks like this. Let me put the background on. And that's what the uh, the final version looked like with all the stipple effects applied. So again, this this is probably going to print better, but we'll see right now. Been at it already, had my tarot read. Things are looking up for me, that's what my tarot said. So in this first print, let's uh, print the one that is you set up with screen print separations on it, right? So we'll see like a little bit more blotchiness in color and not as like smooth or fine color banding on this one. So the first thing it does is it sprays fixation down. It's just like a clear fluid um, and it just helps the ink bind to the shirt. And so once the uh, once it goes through the, the dryer, all the fixation will evaporate off. And when it does that, it starts a chemical process that binds the ink to the organic parts of the shirt, like the organic fibers, so like cotton primarily. Um, the first thing it's gonna do over here is after, after it lays down the layer of fixation, it's gonna print a layer of white under base. Since we're printing on a dark colored garment, like a black right now, we're gonna get a, wanna get like a nice thick layer of white under base underneath it. And after the white underbase prints, then it'll begin to print the color elements on top of the white. And that's what's gonna make sure the red looks red and the you know the white looks white. So now it's adding the second layer of white underbase. Need a pattern shift to just acting different. Living in my minutes and catalytic. That's why they love to jack the style like it's on a civic. I will never pull the strings like an oligarch. I do my dance at the club with the lonely hearts. Watching all these little men try and be bone apart. And make the rest of us do with their broken parts. Uh. Despite evil, we are printing people. in CMYK with red green. So we have specific red and green ink 
where like most direct to garment printers will only print CMYK. Okay. This is like CMYK with white ink. Okay. So you get redder reds, you get greener greens. So this is the like more screen printed separation one, right? You can yeah. see some of the pixels in there. If it's intentional, it looks. No, it still looks good to me. Good, yeah. To my eye, I think it looks killer. Yeah, it's kind of got like a little bit of that like comic book or newsprint aesthetic yeah, to it, right? Where like, hey, if that's what you're distrusting towards, like, that's right. I mean, we still have some like black around it, but like, it doesn't. It's not to the dis like. It doesn't make the print look bad. It really just reminds me of kind of like comic book artwork. Let's do another one, and we'll print the more photorealism one next. Okay. So you're lint rolling it just so there's no obstructions? Anything that's gonna stop Yeah, it? yeah, so like you want uh, to remove like any like little fine hairs or fibers from the print before you print on it. Just cause if you have like a little fuzz ball or a little hair in it, you know, you'll go and put it through the dryer and then the hair will come off, right? And you'll be like missing ink in that area. So really any kind of printing that you're doing, whether it's direct to garment printing or screen printing, you always have to lint roll and like remove any imperfections in the print surface. All right, so I'm gonna get this print loaded up. Here's our non simple version. So this is the version that has like a lot more photorealism. Uh, we've got all of our setup ready to go. Did it right, did it big. Yeah, buddy, we were loving it. New cards, new deck, new life. King of Cups, he comes up right. Always, all days, all nice. See, do I, do I, do I? Redo it. I probably would bring about a little bit. But. Well, what the other thing we could do is just go through and add a bunch of highlights. Like, if you want to just get your white pen and lighten up some of those, it, like, it's not even that it's dark. It's just it lacks contrast between the red and the dark. It does. But like, you see where the red, where it's like the little white pieces. It looks like it's coming off the shirt, and the areas of the print that have less contrast, kind of, it doesn't look as vibrant. Yeah. The, the distance on the color spectrum between these two pixels is just like not enough. Like that's, that red is like too deep red to like be meaningful, you know? Where this black is too black. But like over here in the areas of your artwork where you've like highlighted that white against it, and then it fades into that red, you have a lot like of this contrast goes over a lot of things we were just talking about like there's Before. good parts and bad parts like right here it's really lacking on the highlight spectrum and but then up right here, here this is a good it. demonstration of the contrast that we were talking about that you keep talking about with me for a good reason obviously because i mean you can just see the difference between those two areas so guys pay attention to this area man i need more of this in this print but now we know all right so we just got done in the warehouse um we did a bunch of test prints and we did run into an issue with the first one uh, with my artwork file just being too dark. We did another test print using the realistic version. Um, this is the original version before all the stipple effects that I applied. And the interesting thing is, and even my wife holding the camera right now pointed this out, they're both cool in their own way. But what I will say, and Ian mentioned this brilliantly, he, exp he went over it brilliantly, is the fact that there is some contrast being lost at the bottom. And that's kind of what we were talking about before, you know? You want to make sure there's tons of contrast with saturation, of course, and uh, different colors. You don't want them meshing too much because then you lose contrast, right? Like up here, look at the contrast between the yellow with the eyes and the red background. It's, in, it's insanely detailed and it looks amazing, especially on the dragon's face. Doc's eyeglasses, uh, eyeglasses? glasses <laughs> um it just looks really cool but if you go down here you can see where it's lost and obviously i had text there before which helped it pop out but uh yeah i mean everything he is saying you can literally see it on this print it demonstrates everything perfectly guys this is a shocker for both of us i think i can speak for ian on this yeah. i thought this was gonna look worse with my stipple effects but it actually ended up doing really really well and it held up really well with the print um you can see a lot of the details um, that I just painstakingly added and we even get more contrast and this is actually a demonst uh, this is a good demonstration of um, or a good example of great contrast. This is what we want to see right here. The dragon's not disappearing completely. We got details in his neck, his tail. The only part that should be dark is right here and it is and um, the text again at the bottom uh, brings it all together. What are your thoughts on this one? I'm actually curious. I mean, just the way that you did the separations, I think is a thing of beauty. Like not all separations will turn out this good, but 
it literally looks like a screen print shirt that just came off a direct to garment printer. So I, I think it's just a demonstration of like, hey, as long as you do your separations really well, really clean, you have a lot of contrast in the file itself, like black blacks, white whites. Obviously you're using the red spectrum here as well, but this thing looks incredible. I mean, it looks like it's coming off the cover of a comic book. So mission accomplished. It was supposed to be inspired by an old vintage Dungeons and Dragons uh, print. And I think we nailed it guys. And um, everything we are saying, we put into practice, you know, and that's all you have to do. I think the other main thing to kind of keep in mind is you might get some results that you don't expect with direct to garment printing, especially if you're just starting out in graphic design. The people that you're partnering with to do your printing should be able to help you get the result you're looking for. You, you know, if you just send the artwork file in and place an order, you might not get it the first try. But there's a lot of things that you can do and change in your artwork file to get like dramatically different results out of direct to garment printing. And I think more than anything, this shows it, right? Like you have this photorealism print, there, um, it's like beautiful optical blending, a lot of colors, a lot of richness. What you do with the separations here is just absolutely nail the contrast in the print. And like the whole element of the print just jumps off the shirt. And if you guys watch that that print ready video that I made, I go over the highlight layer on purpose. There's a reason why I put a heavy emphasis on that fourth layer. That fourth layer brings this all together. Without that fourth layer, there's no highlights. It does not look good. So you want to make sure you get that fourth layer looking good. Take your time. Don't rush it. Trust me, guys, if you rush it, you're going to get really bad prints. And it's not the printer's fault, okay? It definitely is. The, it's user error. As designers, we have to be cautious of all this. But that's why Ian made me come out here today. He was like, you know what, dude? We got to get this stuff nailed down to the T. Um, he was losing sleep over it. No, I'm kidding. He wasn't. But uh, I was because I was scared. Well, no, thanks for coming out, Charlie. I think it's like a great example. Like, thanks so much for putting the artwork file together. No, thank I think you, it's man. a perfect example of like the types of results you can expect with direct to garment printing. And it just shows where the graphic designer has a ton of control in making the print come out the way you guys want it to come out. Yeah, dude, without you saying this stuff, I mean, we're not getting the knowledge we need. So thank you so much for allowing me to even be here, man. I appreciate it. We, we killed it today. Guys, what can I say? Um, we have another video coming out too, guys. We're talking about fabrics. We're gonna, he's gonna find me a, a blank that I actually love. This dad bod needs nourishing. So we're gonna find a blank too, so stay tuned for that. But yeah, thanks man, appreciate it.